1992, id Software contracted with Nintendo to port Wolfenstein 3D to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. But as it turned out, this console had too weak hardware to be able to implement the ray casting technique at an acceptable frame rate. But at the same time, John Carmack discovers an article called Constructing Good Partitioning Trees by Bruce Naylor. The content of this article helped John to implement binary space partitioning in Wolfenstein 3D, which allowed him to successfully port this game to the Nintendo console. So it was a defining moment for John to use this method in the Doom engine, and it was the use of binary space partitioning that made Doom the most breakthrough and technologically advanced game at the time, and so let's take a quick look at how BSP works. To deal with BSP, let's first consider a one-dimensional space, this is a straight line with several points on it, and let these points represent some objects. So, the location of these objects can be represented as a binary tree, we take one of the objects as the root node of the tree, and now choosing the next object as the splitter of our space, it becomes a child node, and in turn the objects to the left and right of it become leaf nodes. And so we get a binary search tree, then let's program it, and find out what we need it for. So let's write a node class, it takes some value, this is a position in space, and it will have pointers to child nodes. Then let's determine the positions for our objects and create the root node of the binary tree. Now we need a function to insert a value into the tree, depending on the position value of the object, we will recursively call the insert function until we reach the leaf node, and there we will create an instance of the node class with this value. Let's insert the remaining positions of the objects into the tree, and let's say we use the function to traversal the tree within order. If we run the program, we can see the traversal of nodes from the left subtree to the right. Here we made sure that the binary tree is built correctly, but let's change the traverse function to take into account the position of the player. So, if the player's position is not greater than the value of the object's position, then we leave the traversal of the tree with the in-order method, and in another case, the order of traversal of the tree nodes is reversed. And let's see what benefits it will give us. Now we have a player with a position value of 4, and according to the obtained tree traversal order, we will display these objects. And as we can see, all objects relative to the player appear in order from front to back, and it does not matter which way the player is looking. And this is one of the main advantages of binary space partitioning, which was used by John Carmack. And if everything is clear with one-dimensional space, then let's look at it in relation to Doom, and find out how BSP works in 2D space. So let's consider a space bounded by four vertices, it will be the root node, and in this space we have two objects with the corresponding vertices. Our task is to select and split space using a splitter, a splitter in 2D space is a line, and in Doom a splitter is a directed segment, that is, a vector. After splitting the space into two subspaces, we have additional vertices. So, on the right side in the direction of the splitter, the right subspace is formed, let's call it front, and the left subspace will be called back. This process continues until the subspace becomes a convex polygon, this will be a leaf node and in Doom it is called a subsector, and a divided line is called a segment. In the end, we get a BSP tree, in the nodes of which there is information about the corresponding splitter, and in the leaves, information about the subsectors. And let's, for example, place the player in one of the subsectors, then when traversing the tree from the root node and determining where the player is in relation to the splitter, we can determine the subsector with the player in three checks, and this is another advantage of BSP trees. So, now we can go directly to our project and move on from theory to practice. In the previous episode, we learned how to get WAD file data, and now we can render any map from Doom in 2D mode. We are lucky that all the information about the BSP trees for each map is already contained in the WAD file, that is, we just need to traverse this tree and get all the data. And for this it is necessary to get the data of nodes, subsectors that are leaves of the tree, and for rendering each subsector a list of segments is defined, this segment is formed by splitting the line def with a splitter. And we also need information about the position of the player, it is contained in a lump called things. So, as in the previous episode in the data types file, we will define classes for these lumps, while taking into account their structure from the Doom Wiki website. Then, in the wad reader file, we will define functions to read a single instance of the lump, 
while it is necessary to correctly determine the offset and select the appropriate data type according to the C language. And in the WAD data class we will get all these lumps using the lump data getting method, for this we specify the appropriate function from the WAD reader, determine the lump index and the number of bytes for one instance of the lump. And when we have received all this data, then let's first create the player class in a separate file. So this will be a class in which we will access the thing's data through an instance of the engine class, a thing with a zero index contains information about the player, here we will get his position and the value of the angle of the direction of view. The thing's lump also contains information about the position of other players for multiplayer, information about monsters and other items. After importing this class, we create an instance of it in the onInit method and also call the update method. And by the way, as one of the viewers of the previous video noted, the flip function should be called in the draw method, in order for the rendering to be exactly after the update method. Well, now we can write a method to draw the position of the player, and for this it is enough to remap its coordinates, and draw it as a blue circle. And if we run the program, we can see the position of the player on the map, and if we take into account his direction of view, then this corresponds to the view of the four column area when you first start Doom. And finally, we can move on to binary space partitioning. In this class, we will access the player, a list of nodes, subsectors, and segments. And in Doom, the root node ID in the list of nodes is the last node. So, similarly, we import and create an instance of the BSP class, and now we can write a method for drawing nodes, but first we will slightly change the color scheme of our map. By the node ID, we get its instance from the list of nodes, each node has two bounding boxes, front and back, for rendering them we will write the appropriate method, where we will get the parameters for drawing them using the pygame rect function. And for the node, the partition line or splitter is also defined, for drawing which we will also calculate the corresponding values. And let's call this method by passing the ID of the root node. And so we can display the root node data, the little blue line is the split line, and since it's pointing down, the front bounding box is on the left and the back is on the right. And in order to traverse the BSP tree, we now need a way to determine which side of the splitter the player is on. And the cross product property is great for this, since the direction of the partition line is already in the node data, and the cross product sign means the side of the player relative to the splitter. And now in the render BSP node method, we determine which side of the partition line the player is on, and traverse the BSP tree in a front to back way. But we must stop the tree traversal when we reach the leaf node, that is, it will be the player's subsector. And Doom uses a subsector identifier for this, which is the number 2 to the 15th power. Since we read node IDs as unsigned 16-bit numbers, then node IDs that are greater than or equal to this identifier mean that we have reached a subsector, and in turn, the subsector ID is determined as the difference between these values. By the way, in the Doom source code, this is done in the form of bitwise operations. And to start traversing the BSP tree, we just need to call this method by passing the ID of the root node to its input. And if you do some work, then you can visualize how the tree is traversed. In this demo, we see how the subsector we need is found in just a few steps, while the tree contains more than 400 nodes, but now our task is to render the segments pointed to by this subsector. And to do this, we write a method in which we get the necessary subsector by ID, which in turn has data on the number of segments in it, as well as the ID of the initial segment, and then we can get all the segments of this subsector. And in order to draw segments, then as a debug, you can write methods to get a random color by seed value, and a method for drawing a segment, where we can get the coordinates of its vertices and draw it as a line, and the subsector ID will act as a seed value, so that all the segments of one subsector were the same color. Then let's apply this method in the subsector render method. And if you look at the result, we can see the rendering of the segments that appear in exactly the order from front to back relative to the player, and it was this advantage that provided the appearance of Doom at that time. And of course, we still have to understand and apply the work of a number of algorithms to see the final picture, but undoubtedly the use of binary space partitioning has become the core of Doom.